Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Car Stereo Lab. How you doing? Good. You ready to get going? Let's go. For those of you aren't familiar with Car Stereo Lab, take Fernando's car. We have a lab set up in the back. Inputs, outputs, amplifiers, power. It's all there, and today we have a very special product we're going to be taking a look at. It is a new product from Audio Control, and this is a beta, so it might not even be available to you yet. We're filming this, of course, long before you actually get to see it, in hopes that they'll actually let us play it for you. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and welcome to Car Stereo Lab. So one of the cool things about having this YouTube channel and having great working relationships with manufacturers such as Audio Control is it gives us the ability to beta test some of the new product because we do this for a living. We have cars in the bay all the time. We can get more hands on and do evaluations in real world. One of the reasons why we built the lab was to do that. It also gives us the ability to check things out and see if there's a glitch somewhere, put it in a more controlled environment. But enough of that. Let's take a look at what they've sent us to play with today. Now for those of you that are like, oh my God, are they gonna show me the five channel amp? We're not. So if that's what you're hoping for, sorry. But I think this is equally as cool for the time that we're in in the car audio world. Enough talking, let's get to it. Integrating it into a factory radio is something that happens all the time today. The number one device to do that right now is the LC2i. This is Audio Control's high-end, high-level to low-level adapter with AccuBase. AccuBase allows you to compensate for where the subwoofer rolls off, this will pick back up and have a nice flowing bass sound throughout the whole range of the volume control on the factory radio. The downside to it is it's not the easiest thing to set because you kind of have to do it all by ear. Guess what? That is getting ready to change with the new LC2 2i Pro. Now let's take a look at both of them together so we can see the similarities and the differences. Similarity wise, we still have speaker level inputs here. We still have our power inputs here. On the opposite side, we have main RC output. This is a full range output. So if you're feeding in here a full range signal and you would like to just go off to a normal highs amplifier as well as a sub amplifier, you can. Or if your situation you don't have bass roll off, you can come out of main as well. They both have main and they both have base output. Something new added to it is load selection. One of the things that is becoming more and more common is that the factory radios, whether it has an external amplifier or an internal amplifier, is they need load resistors put on them, meaning they need to see some form of an ohm load to keep the radio on. The reason why they put that in there is if the speaker was to blow, the amplifier channel doesn't stay on and run the risk of breaking the more expensive product. This has the load resistors built in to it. This of course came out long before that ever was needed. GTO Sense is now a selectable switch here, where on the older version it was a jumper located in the side here. The ground isolation, the LC2i had ground isolation, it just wasn't easy to get to. It is now a switch on the outside of the unit. They both will still take a base level controller. They've moved the knobs around. On the older version you had AccuBase control here and AccuBase threshold here here. Now they're both conveniently located right here and there's a light. This is it. This is what will turn on to tell you that AccuBase is actually on. So now you can better tune this to actually use the AccuBase. Your main level control was in the center here. This was kind of confusing. It was the, the controller for this and this went like that. And it, Okay, main is up here by main, sub base is by sub. So it's a total redesign as far as making sense of the gain controls and where they're located. As you can see, the LC2i is a tad bit longer, but it is a lot thinner. This will make installation a little bit easier because it's more streamlined, so we'll be able to tuck in more locations. Let's say you don't have bass roll off and you're gonna be coming out of the main. Well, you're still paying for this. Wouldn't it be nice if they made one of these that didn't involve this circuit right here? I'm hinting towards something. This is the new LC1i. It's just that. Basically the LC2i Pro minus the AccuBase. Let's take a look at some of the features here. You still have the same signal input. They've moved power over to here. So you have line input here. This is also a line driver. So you can go high level in or line level in and it's a built in line driver. You have your output signal here, which would be just the same as your main. You have your level control. So the natural next question would be, well, it's got a line driver. How much voltage will it put out? No 
idea. Now see, that's one of the joys of being a beta tester. There's no instructions, there's no how-tos. A box shows up, it's got something in it, and we have to figure it out. It's just what it is. Somebody somewhere probably has the instructions for them, but they're not gonna give them to us because they want us to try to figure it out. Part of the purpose of being a beta tester is trying to break or screw up or do something wrong because they know that's what's gonna happen once it gets out of the field. We have a pretty good understanding on how most car audio stuff works. The hopes are that we'll just be able to figure it out. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Either way, the plan now is to take those two devices and install them into the lab. How we're gonna use them is the LC1 is going to power the highs amplifier, and naturally the LC2 is gonna power the sub amplifier. We could use just the LC2 to do the job, but we have both of them and we need to test them, so it only makes sense to do it that way. For this car, we're using the factory radio. What we need is a left and right output, which we have here. We're going to just plug into those. We're also gonna come over here and grab our power and ground, these guys. One of the features we want to test is the turn on, meaning the GTO. We should be able to just connect in our speaker wires and the unit turn on. It does have the option to hook up like an accessory remote turn on if needed. So we will flick these toggle switches down and the GTO will be in the middle. It has audio sense as well. If the GTO isn't working, we can switch to that. I'm not a big fan of the signal sense. It, it doesn't always work. And that's not just them, that's in general. We'll make sure our level are turned down. When we're talking about load resistors. We have 20 ohm, 60 ohm, and 20,000 ohm. 20,000 ohm is essentially off. For the G35 that we're using, the radio in there was pre-load resistors. We don't need to turn those on. However, if you have something like a Chrysler, a Ford, you're gonna need to turn those on. Connecting this to the lab is pretty straightforward. As I said, we have our speaker wires out here. There is a barrier strip there for it to attach to. However, we have some RCAs that are attached to that that we can just use as quick disconnects. We have the front coming into the LC1i. The wires are wide out coming into the LC2i Pro. We have our power and grounds that are connected. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be functional because this is a lab. What we're going to do now, turn it on and make sure everything works and then we'll do some setup. We have our red power light. That means the GTO is working. What the GTO is looking for, if I was to guess, would be the DC offset and how we measure for DC offset. Take our digital multimeter, we set it for DC, put one terminal on ground and one terminal on to a speaker output and you'll see we have six volts that's what we're looking for when we shut the system off it goes away and so does our power light on the unit I'm a firm believer in adjusting one thing at a time I'm going to disconnect for right now the LC2i Pro we'll come back to that let's set up the LC1 one of the features I forgot to mention when I had them both on the bench is the maximized light they both have it that is what's gonna allow us to set up our maximum amount of output before the distortion we're gonna play our test tone and start turning this up. We want to make sure that we unplug our speaker wires to our amplifier though because we don't want to blow them. We've done this enough to know that at volume 28 on his factory radio is where we don't get any more signal. We're going to turn it up to there and then we'll start adjusting our set screw. He's at volume 28. Light comes on. We'll turn it back a hair. Now we want to go to our amplifier because it also has a maximized output and it is on. We want to turn down our input here a little bit where it goes off and that means we're set up. Plug the amplifier back in. Let's hop into the car, see if we have highs. So as the expert on the sound quality in your car, how does it sound for just a basic high level to low level adapter? It sounds very clear, definitely. Loud, this is normal, yeah. Volume's about where yeah, it normally it would be? normally how it is, yeah. Very good, and that's what we're going for here. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure when using high level to low level adapter that you get no extra colorization coming from the high level to low level. Now in the past we've used an LC2i in this. So we have a good baseline as for what it should sound like. You wanna make sure it sounds, well, at least that good. I'm assuming I mean, at this point, it probably sounds a little better. Mm -hmm. I mean, the highs are really nice. They're yeah. very clear. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to the LC2i Pro. Start with, we'll set it up the exact same way. We'll play our subwoofer test tones, and we'll turn our dials. Remember there again to unplug your speakers. Don't have any speakers hooked up. Start turning up your gain. We have our maximized light on. We'll go back to our amplifier. You can see the light on right there. Get the two of them worked out so you have the right volume. The gains are all set, it's time to move on to AccuBase. AccuBase has been kind of difficult to set up to this point, and that's why they finally added that light. Now when I described AccuBase earlier, what I had said is to compensate for bass roll off. Go more in depth than that, it's when you're turning the volume up on your radio and 
and all the mids and highs just keep getting louder and louder and louder. But you'll notice your subwoofer doesn't. It kind of plateaus, and that's exactly what's happening. The car manufacturer doesn't want the speakers to blow, and more bass is gonna do that. It doesn't matter whether you turn the bass up on the radio, it's just not gonna get any louder. Well, we wanna fix that because we want our subwoofer to match level for level as the volume turns up. What you need to listen for is where that happens on the radio. Start turning up the volume. As the volume gets louder and it stops, and it doesn't matter whether you go past that, nothing, it just doesn't do anything. Go back to where you notice that change. In this case, we're gonna use 20. 20 is kind of where we notice the change. Leave it on 20. Playing that same test tone is where you're gonna want to start adjusting your AccuBase. And let me show you how. Turn the level all the way down. Turn the threshold all the way up. Now there's a 10 second delay with the threshold. If you're coming from up, you'll notice I'll do this, and it doesn't do anything, the light is still on. If you wait 10 seconds, it shuts off. So it's easier to start with it turned all the way up and then start working backwards. Slowly start turning it down and pause. What you're waiting for is that 10 seconds off. You're trying to match the output of the radio with the input of the AccuBase. All right, so it turned off. We wanna try going up just a little bit more. All right, it turned on. Let's wait. You gotta wait those 10 seconds. We found the threshold of where the bass roll off starts on your radio. Now, Fernando runs into the car and he turns the volume down. It's gonna stay on, but it'll go off. Now, if we turn it back up to 20, it turns back on. If it isn't perfect, you can adjust it ever so slightly. And remember to wait that 10 seconds. Now you have level control. For this is where you're gonna wanna use your ears. What you're trying to do is the level, you're trying to match that rise that the mids and highs are doing. You want them both to work in parallel. So what's gonna happen is as the sound is coming up, it's gonna hit the spot where it's gonna roll off. That's where you've just set your AccuBase to. Now with the level, you're trying to decide how it's gonna ride with those mids and highs. You set it too high, it's gonna get boomy Real fast. If you set it too low, it's not gonna stay parallel. So you're gonna have to play with it a little bit to have those levels match. The other thing you may notice too with threshold and level is that the maximized light might come on. You might have to turn things down just a little bit because now you're putting more signal through. If it does, just turn it down a hair, it's okay. Naturally you need to start somewhere. 12 o'clock seems to be a good place to start. That way you can go up, you can go down, but at least you have something there as a starting point. We're not worried about anything between zero and 20. We're worried about everything after 20. That's where you wanna worry about the ramp up. That's the level you're trying to match, not anything before. Before it all was nice and dandy and parallel. Turn it up to 21, 22, 23, this goes up to 28. We're gonna worry about 25 through 28. Make sure that we have that level balance there. So as he's turning up and down the volume, I'm listening to see if it's giving me that parallel rise. And I think I got it pretty close. Okay, I didn't get it good. I gotta go back and adjust it. You know when it's wrong because you'll be on like 20 and then you'll go to the next number up and it'll be like boom, 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 boom. And he's like, oh crap, the level's too high. That's what you're listening for. I like it. I'm pretty happy. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's got a light. And believe it or not, that light makes all the difference in the world. I know. Who would have thought? I could see the light. light. One light. Don't go that's to it. the light. <laughs> well, that's it. We hope you've liked this first look at the new audio control, high level to low levels, the LC1, the LC2 Pro. These things are going to be big hits. I can't wait. We're super excited that they let us play with these. He's going to rock them in his car for a couple days, but then they got to go back. I don't want to give them back, though. Not going to lie. Fernando, end the show. All right, guys. I'm to the next one. See ya. Bye.